Welcome back, everybody. I want to talk about Pulse Ox Pleth. Okay, so you guys uh, may not know what that is. I know some of you do. Uh, some of you may be thinking, what is this, some kind of new tool we can't afford? But what if I told you this was on probably every monitor you had ever used, ever? Okay, let's get into what it is. All right, this is Pleth. That pretty little line that's usually right in the center of the CO2 and the lead to display on your average monitor, be it Lifepack, Zoll, Philips, what have you. It's a line we don't always pay a lot of attention to, right? We've always been told pulse oximetry was unreliable and it would lie to you and yada, yada, yada. And those statements are not necessarily wrong, okay? In certain conditions, we know we can't trust them. But I want to talk a little bit about how valuable this pleth is, okay? So, what is pleth? Plethysmography, all right, say that five times fast. Plethysmography is a representation of the arterial bulge when the heart pumps, okay? So your heart creates, uh, of course, increased pressure on systole, right? And this causes the arteries to kind of bulge out. This can give insight into the perfusion by seeing the throb, okay? So if you've ever had a, a broken bone or you've had a smashed finger or thumb or a toothache, you know what a throb is. You know what it feels like. That throb comes from every time your heart pumps, pressure increases. And since you've already got some swelling in that thumb that you hit with a hammer or that tooth that's uh, been injured or whatever, okay, that increase in pressure is sensed by your baroreceptors and your nociceptors, okay? And that's what produces the throbbing sensation. But that throb is there all the time. It's just not always painful. And that's what pulse ox is measuring, okay? So, uh, well, that's what pleth is measuring. Pulse ox itself is one of the measurements of bound hemoglobin. When we talk about pleth, we're talking about an actual presence of increased pressure in that moment in time. And that's what pleth is actually showing. So it's a good indicator when you're losing mechanical capture. If you're pacing a patient and you begin seeing your pleth go down, all right? So let's go forward. What can this tell you? It can tell you if those PVCs are perfusing or not, okay? That, that wavy line is not just a, a digital representation of what the monitor thinks is happening. If your patient has an intact vascular system and there's not too much there to try to fool it, it actually senses that rush of blood coming into it, all right? How about pulses paradoxus, okay? So when people take that deep breath and their blood pressure can drop dramatically sometimes, you may be able to catch that on pleth, okay? Uh, other irregularities, as you can see, irregular heartbeats and things of that nature. And uh, again, to reiterate, it can show when your transcutaneous pacing is beginning to lose that mechanical capture, whether you need to dial up uh, the voltage to fix it or whatever have you. So one way I like to think of pleth is like an instant blood pressure, which is one thing that I've always you know, wished I could have. No matter how fast I set uh, an auto cuff on a monitor or no matter how well I'm working in an ambulance taking a manual blood pressure, uh, I very often wish I had, you know, blood pressures every second all the time. And one of the ways you can kind of get that is through pleth. And I know it's not the same thing and it's not as reliable. However, it is showing you how well your patient is possibly perfusing or at least how well the blood is circulating, right? So some monitors even have little lines in them. These are sort of guidelines that say, okay, this is the minimum amount of pleth that the patient needs to have in order to to say accurately hey they're perfusing they're doing what they need to be doing right so as you can see uh, in in the way figure one defines this uh, the two inner lines are the minimum that is needed in pleth to say okay this patient has adequate blood pressure going back and forth to uh, every part of their body and of course that's one reason we measure pulse ox in the periphery right we measure it at the end of the finger on the nose or some pleth can even be taken through the forehead and of course everyone's used earlobes and things like that and toes on pediatrics as well but there's a couple things all right all the things you were told that made a pulse ox unreliable are still true okay patients uh, that are in shock patients that are hypothermic your septic patients because of the vasodilation those types of things still make can make a pulse ox not exactly reliable in terms of the way we think about it right so pulse ox only measures bound hemoglobin and pleth now you know that but in terms of the actual oximetry value it's just measuring how bound the hemoglobin is it has no way of measuring whether that hemoglobin uh, is is so bound to the oxygen that it's not giving it to the tissues or anything like that it just has a way of saying okay when it passed by the hemoglobin was fully loaded and now you can also take, if this knowledge was new to you, you can also take the knowledge of pleth and say, okay, they've got pressure and they've got bound hemoglobin. 
but if the tissues are still not oxygenating or if they're still presenting in a, in a shocky manner or some other type of critical presentation, we know it's something else because we can rule out some of this by using pleth. Okay, thanks for watching, guys.